morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Bible class. Today is lesson number 143. Boys and girls, get ready for a doctrinal drill. Question number one. What is sin? All the bad things we do. Question number two. Who took our punishment for sin? Jesus when he died on the cross. Question number three. Did Jesus ever sin? No. Boys and girls, let's review our memory verse. Our memory verse for the week is found in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. It reads, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. One more time. Matthew 11, verse 28. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. One more time, boys and girls. Matthew 11, verse 28. Come to me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Please make sure you are practicing your memory first every single day. All right, boys and girls, get ready for our Bible story. Jesus brought his disciple to the Garden of Gethsemane, where silence filled the garden except for the sighing of the wind in the olive trees. The disciples were tired and weary because the hour was now very late. Jesus told them to sit down and wait while he went ahead to pray. He took Peter, James, and John and walked some yards away from the others. Then Jesus began to be very sad and sorrowful. His soul was greatly troubled. The time of his suffering and death for the sins of the world had come. He said, my soul is crushed with sorrow. Stay here in a wake with me. Jesus wanted the comfort of having these three disciples near him, watching and praying while he prayed. Jesus went forward a little and fell on the ground. His suffering was so great that it seemed impossible to bear. Though he was God, he was enduring the human suffering as he became our sin substitute. In agony, he prayed, Oh, Father, if it's possible, let this suffering be taken away from me. But I want your will, not mine. He met, Father, is there any way of saving people from their sin without this terrible suffering? without me dying on the cross? If there is, do it in some other way. But I want your will, not mine, to be done. But there was no other way for God to redeem sinful men. And Jesus knew that before the world was created. And that is why he willingly came from heaven and offered himself as a lamb to be sacrificed, to be taken to take away the sins of the world. Returning to Peter, James, and John, Jesus found them asleep. He called out to them, My friends, couldn't you even stay awake with me one hour? You need to pray so that you won't fall when temptation comes. Right when they should have been praying for comfort, strength, and help, they went to sleep. Again, Jesus led the disciples and prayed the same prayer. And again, he went back and he found them sleeping. So he went to pray a third time. He prayed so earnestly and his heart was so broken that his sweat was like as if it was great drop of blood falling to the ground. But then something wonderful happened. His father sent an angel from heaven to straighten him. At last, rising from the ground, Jesus went back at once where Peter and James and John was, still huddled together in a deep sleep. Rise up, 
Let's be going, he said. Here comes the one to betray me. There, through the dark garden, came a rowdy mob with torches and lanterns, sticks and swords. They had been sent by the Jewish religious leaders. And who was leading this wild, angry mobs? None other than Judas. Judas had told a religious leader that he would give them a sign so they would know which one was Jesus. The one I go up to and kiss is the one you are after. As the crowd gathered around, Judas stepped up to Jesus, kissed his cheek, and embraced him in a friendly way and said, Greetings, Master. The Savior knew why Judas kissed him, so he said, Friend, why are you here? Would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Jesus turned to the crowd and asked, For whom are you looking? They answered, for Jesus of Nazareth. I am he, he replied. And when he said this, the whole crowd drew back and fell to the ground like they were dead men. They were terrified because they were in the presence of the almighty God. Finally, some of the people staggered to their feet and came up to Jerusalem and grabbed him. Peter was so upset that he drew his sword and caught off the right ear of one of the men, Malchus, the servant of the high priest. Put your sword away, Peter, Jesus commanded, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Then Jesus reached out and touched the ear of Malchus and healed him. How loving and kind Jesus was to his enemies, even when they were taking him away as a prisoner. The men were not capturing Jesus, but instead Jesus let them take him, for that was why he came from heaven. So they took Jesus as a prisoner and led him away. The disciples, paralyzed with fear, scattered in all directions. They all forsook him and fled. Later, after it was too late, Judas took the money back to the priests and scribes in the temple and said, I have betrayed innocent blood. But they would not take his money because they said it was blood money. So Judas threw it down on the temple floor, went out, got a rope and hung himself. What a dreadful, tragic end for one who had every chance to be saved. The rulers took the money and bought a plot of ground for poor people to be buried in. As Jesus looks into our hearts today, I wonder if he sees that some of us are hypocrites like Judas. We don't mean what we say. Outwardly, we act one way, but we feel the other way inside. It is perfectly possible to go to church in Sunday school, to try to be good and kind, to outwardly pray, to avoid cheating or using unkind words or being unfair and still not belong to the Lord. If that's the case with you, why don't you now make things right with the Lord? All right, boys and girls, that is our time for Bible today. Have a wonderful day.